Aubrey, do you want to keep the, if you're there, do you want to keep the host duties or do you want to give them to me? I'm good either way. We do have uh, Dewey Reagan in the, um, in the applicants list. And I believe, um, he's a presenter. Um, that's not who I have on my list, but I'm going to go ahead and unmute you. Dewey Reagan, you're unmuted. Can you let me know you can hear me? Okay. Yes, I can hear you. I don't think I'm going to be a presenter. I'm represented by counsel, Brad uh, uh, Strasberg, and he should be joining us momentarily. Okay, thank you. Okay, Brad, I just put you in the panelist list. Um, you'll be able to mute and unmute yourself. Hello, Matt. How are you, Aubrey? How are you? Doing all right. How are you? I'm doing good. Great. Aubrey, can you hear me? This is Brad. Yes, I can hear you. Nice. Um, if you could please turn on your camera while you're making your presentation, please. Thank you. And just so everybody knows, we are actively recording. I still have a couple of minutes left until five. Is, is that what you see, Aubrey, as well? Yeah, I see 458. Okay, and do we have everybody here that's uh, gonna be part of our hearing tonight? Yes, we do. Okay, great. Well, in that case, unless uh, one of the city attorneys uh, tells me otherwise, am I okay to begin since everyone is present and we're recording? You are okay to start. Okay. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to the Salt Lake City Planning Division to our appeals hearing for Salt Lake City. My name is Matt Worth. I'm one of the appeals hearing officers uh, for the city. Uh, tonight, uh, it, it is Thursday, March 10th, um, and tonight we have two matters uh, for a public hearing before us, uh, both Reagan billboard appeals, the first one um, for uh, billboard at approximately 938 North, 900 West, and the second one uh, with respect to 533 South, 400 West. And uh, the, the, the first one at 938, just let me make sure this is the one that uh, uh, I think, yeah. Uh, well, first here, the, the first appeal for the 938 North 900 West uh, property. And just a, a, a reminder that this was originally heard on December 9th, but because of uh, a noticing issue uh, that we are rehearing this issue. So. Just as a reminder, nothing from that previous hearing is, is applicable here. It's as if that hearing back on a seventh day never happened. So we're starting over. And that was long enough ago. I can't even remember it anyway. So uh, so I think we're in, 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 in good shape there. So uh, it, it, if, if we could, uh, 
I, I think it, uh, if everyone's okay, if there's any staff person that wants to get, I mean, let, let me just say this. Um, Obviously, I've read all the materials, the the, the appeal uh, from the uh, appellant, as well as the city response. So I'm generally familiar with that. If if Amy or anyone from the city wants to uh, give any preliminary sort of just general information about the the matter before us, and maybe for the purposes of anybody from the public, I realize that I don't think anybody from the public is is here to participate in although it is a public hearing uh, maybe be, be beneficial at a minimum just to give a, a, a brief put the matter in context uh, for us and then following that if if there is any comment from the city we'll turn some time over to it and i understand uh, mr strasberg that, that that you are here representing the the appellant um and and we'll give you time to uh present your uh, uh, arguments and, and then have the, the city will have an opportunity to respond to that and then we'll give the appellant the last word and then we'll and I may jump in for questions and issues along the way. So, uh, a Amy, did you have anything preliminary you can just kind of set the stage for the matter? Sure, I can just give a brief introduction to uh, the appeal. Um, this is an appeal again at 938 North 900 West submitted by uh, Reagan Outdoor Advertising. Um, they are represented by Bradley Strasberg. Um, the appeal issue at hand is Salt Lake City made an administrative decision to deny a request by Reagan Outdoor Advertising to construct a billboard at approximately 938 North 900 West. Uh, the request was denied because um, under Salt Lake City's billboard regulations, new billboards are pro prohibited within 600 feet of a gateway, and the proposed location of the billboard is on a parcel that abuts Interstate I-15, which is identified as a gateway in the city code. Um, we did get a couple public comments. Um, those were forwarded you, to you earlier today um, by Aubrey. Um, hopefully you got those, and I do um, think that we actually have some people from the public that are ready to speak on both of these matters, um, just as a heads up. Oh, good. Thank you for that, and I apologize mm -hmm. for not recognizing that beforehand. I, I didn't want to give the impression to any members of the public that we're not wanting to hear from you. We are. <laughs> this is a public hearing, so thank you for clarifying it. By the way, I did receive for the record, those uh, items that were forwarded on to me by by Aubrey. So thank you, Amy. A anything else? I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, no, that's everything. Um, Samantha Slark. I'm sure we'll have a lot more information than I have. Yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Strasberg. If you want to um, uh, take take the time you need uh, and uh, share your thoughts, anything again. Um, that you feel would be helpful and uh, then we'll give the city an opportunity and then we'll open it up for, for public hearing. Okay, great. I appreciate that. And um, I don't know what I call you, your, your worship, your, your, <laughs> your greatness. I'm not really sure what your title is. Uh, uh, you can just call me Matt. <laughs> Matt, all right. <laughs> well, um, Matt, from, from our perspective, this, this really should have been a pretty simple relocation matter uh, under state code, we submitted our application. And I think it's important to note that this is application 3844 back uh, to relocate on April 29th. Um, now, admittedly, nothing in the application says it's supposed to be under state law, state relocation law, but there is no requirement for that. So it's just a, you know, and it's just an application you submit that doesn't even have space for something like that. But um, but Reagan did notice that after that was submitted that um, they do uh, send a letter, uh, at least on occasion, specifying, hey, this is going to be under state law, not city code. Um, and just wanted to make sure the city was, was aware of that. And that was on May 24th. That was a few weeks later. And then we receive an email from the city on May 28th, basically saying, as uh, I think Amy just said, city denied the application on the basis that city ordinance didn't allow for it. Um, and they tell us to submit a new application if it's gonna be under state law. 
Uh, and then they also inform us that that is a final decision and to appeal through the city's procedures. So we did that um, and we filed then a new application uh, just to be on the safe side there. Uh, and that's ends up being number 4949, totally different new application. Now, we did receive another letter on November 1st and from the city, and it still IDs the permit as the first one, 3844, the first application, and it talks about state law and city code and asks for additional information. Of course, this appeal had already been filed uh, months prior to that. So it's a little confusing as to the process here and what exactly Reagan's supposed to do. Now, I mean, to be uh, open and frankly, to to try and resolve this issue, we we have and continue to state that if the city will agree that our, our, our second application, the 4949, will be considered on its own without making some argument that we're now barred from making that application under some principle like res judicata or waiver or any equitable or legal argument. And we, we've told them before, we will agree to dismiss this appeal, but they, they, they won't agree to that, or at least that's my understanding. Candidly, I'm new to this case, right? So I don't, I haven't had communications with Ms. Slark on this issue, um, but I've, I've reviewed emails and I don't see anything that said that the city would agree to that. Um, the problem from Reagan's perspective is, uh, I mean, again, to be candid, the city plays games with Reagan. And frankly, we every application we submit lately is denied for any particular reason. And when we appeal, we're told it's a, the wrong place to appeal. So we have a we 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 can't you know just dismiss this appeal or agree to dismiss this appeal unless the city will you know state on the record, hey, we will consider that second application on its own. And you know nothing in this application will uh, affect the decision as you know, and it shouldn't. Um, frankly, if they don't agree to that, then you know we should win our appeal because our appeal is under you know our our request for relocation is allowed and and frankly required under state law. The city only provided ordinances in uh, as an objection to it, which are essentially all due respect, meaningless when state law allows for the relocation and, and, and it's 10 9 a 5 13, which basically says this happens if they don't, if the city doesn't, you know, start condemnation proceedings within 180 days of the application, we get to do it. Um, now, we don't, I have no interest in sort of, you know, railroading this issue through. I think the you know, the, the, the proper way to do it would be for the city to agree that the first application has no bearing on the second application. But if they're not going to do that, you know, we ask to relocate. There is no requirement that we specify the statute under which we're seeking relocation. The city rejected the application, not on any basis of state law. And like I say, 513 allows for the relocation. The city doesn't even argue Anything contrary to the point in its staff report, what they argue is, oh, this court doesn't have jurors. This administ administrative appeal officer, Matt, doesn't have jurisdiction to hear it because it's something about state law and it doesn't have jurisdiction to consider state law. And this is another sort of game the city's been playing with us lately. Obviously, as Amy just said, this was a decision based entirely on city code, not on state law. So I don't even know why that argument is being made here. And second, the city, frankly, I know we're getting a little technical here, but the city should be a stop from making that argument because in its correspondence to us in the denial, it told us exactly how we should proceed under administrative rules. And it even gave us the form. It said, see the form here, which is the administrative appeal form. So to now argue, oh, you, you messed up. I mean, this is the kind of game that we've been playing now for a while. And um, it's not just improper, but it's contrary to the state law and it's contrary to the city's own code. Um, city, uh, then finally, the city makes a brief argument. This is moot, but clearly it's, it, it's not moot. 
And frankly, if the city isn't willing to make the concession we want, which isn't much of a concession, then um, our argument is we should win this appeal based on application of state law. And that's right. That's really my the thrust of my argument. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And so again, just to not not put words in your mouth, uh, but but you, you, at a minimum, you're looking for at least some clarification or a, a concession from the city to say that that first application doesn't have any bearing on the second application, the outcome of of this application, given that that's kind of the, what they told you to do, uh, the, the, the first application came in under, under city code arguments, the second application came under state uh, law application, and that you just want those heard separately, and that this appeal would be moot in the sense that the city would allow the second one to at least be considered. Yeah, without, without any argument that we're somehow barred, stopped, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's 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 helpful. Thank you, Ms. Lark. Do you want to? Uh, I assume you you'll respond to this and answer that, uh, among other uh, questions or issues that you'd like to address. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I do appreciate that Mr. Strasberg is new to this case, so maybe isn't familiar with the communications and stuff that has gone back and forth before. Um, it is helpful to. Um, here today that perhaps the concern that um, Reagan has is um, the, the letter that was sent with regard to their second state law application had the application number from the previous one and they had been brought to my attention previously and perhaps that is what's causing such consternation. I don't know. Um, with respect to, I mean, we've repeatedly told, I agree, we told um, Reagan that they needed to file an application saying that they were requesting the um, relocation under provisions of state law, which they went ahead and did. And as you can see from the materials that we have submitted, we are processing that application and specifically asked Reagan for some information to be able to process that application. And as the hearing officer may recall, we kind of had this conversation with, um, it was Mr. Peterson that was representing Reagan at the time, and he was asking for the same um, uh, acknowledgement. And we said, yes, we're processing the application. We've requested information from you. We're waiting for that information to come back. And he kept asking for more affirmances. And I was asking what the concern was, like, what are you concerned about? I don't understand. And it would have been helpful at that point if perhaps it had been brought to our attention that they were concerned that the application numbers was, were the same and that it was a typographical error and we were happy to address that um, for him at that time. Um, I don't know what class that we can say. We, are, we, are, we have application number one with one number, application number two with another number. We're, we're processing application number two. We've requested information with respect to application number two and we haven't received it. I don't know what else I could I mean, I said that previously, other than the application numbers, and I don't know what else I can say. And Samantha, can I just ask for, for my purposes as well, and just for that clarification, which I think you're saying, obviously the outcome of, of this application has no bearing on you processing and moving forward with that, with that second application, because it is treated as completely separate applications. Is that, is that yeah. right? I mean, yeah, I guess I just don't understand what, what folks are saying when they say have no bearing. Like, yeah, one application has been denied on the provision of city code. Yeah, we're, pro we're processing the other application and no decision has been made on that. I mean, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want to short circuit anything here, but given that, uh, Mr. Strasberg, um, um, do, you, do you feel like we need to move forward with this appeal tonight, uh, given the city's uh, confirmation that this has no bearing on the processing of that second application? Well, I mean, I kind of heard, uh, Matt, we, we, and Samantha, we've all heard witnesses testify 
or politicians speak in a way that doesn't quite answer the question. I didn't really hear an answer to the actual question because the, our, my concern is that the city comes back and says, um, we're denying this second application on the basis of something like res judicata, something like um, estoppel, some sort of any sort of legal or equitable argument that isn't actually based on the merits of our application. I mean, just, just so we're clear, just so we're crystal clear here, the application, and, and maybe I, 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 miss, I, I, I may have misheard something you said and didn't clarify it earlier. So I just want to do that now, if that's all right. Um, sure. The application that Reagan originally made, um, like I said, it didn't state anything on it. Reagan notified the city prior to their prior to their um, rejection of the application that this is under state law. So so they had that knowledge, and and my concern is that because we deal with the, with all sorts of defenses that actually never get to the merits of our application is that somehow that's going to preclude consideration of the second application. What I need is an acknowledgement that nothing in the first application will be used uh, as a basis, almost like as to deny the to deny the second application, almost like you said, the other thing never happened, right? The other hearing never happened. And um, as far as I'm concerned, it didn't because I wasn't even there. And um, but uh, I, that's what we need because I don't want to now have to deal with another argument that's not on the merits of the application itself. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I, again, I I don't want us to talking in circles because that's what I thought I heard the city acknowledge is that this. Uh, each application is is heard on its own on its own merits, irrespective of the outcome of tonight or this application. Does not have bearing, at least what I'm hearing. I, and I want uh, Miss Miss Slark to to confirm this if she can, that that these are two essentially unrelated applications, even though they. They do have to do with the same subject matter, but this isn't a court of law in the sense of I'm not aware of. I don't think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that, that the city would could use a some doctrine of race judicata to say, oh, well, this issue has already been decided in your appeals hearing officer, and therefore your other application dealing with this is, is going to be. We're not even going to get to it because he he's already decided on that. I uh, what I'm hearing is I think. That's not the case, and that's not how the city is going to proceed. But would you humor us, Miss Slark, and and help clarify once again your understanding of how that is 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 going to proceed with respect to the first and the second applications? Yeah, my understanding is that the first application has been denied because um, we considered it under city code. We've received a second application. And we're considering it under the provision of state code. Um, I think to the extent that Mr. Strasberg um, is uh, stating that he wants like wider affirm affirmations, um, I think Mr. Strasberg and I have been in um, a lot of litigation together over the years with respect to billboards and and um, we have received we have been the end of arguments where our words have been taken out of context and distorted. So to the extent that I think the city is careful in what it's saying, um, it is because of that. Um, and I'd rather not turn this into an, uh, a mudslinging circumstance. Um, but yes, the way that these are being treated is application one was considered to see if it complied with city code was denied based on that. We have application number two. We are considering whether it complies with the provisions of state code that Reagan has identified that it's requesting us to consider it under. We've asked for additional information from Reagan to be able to process the application. We asked for that in November and we still haven't received it. But that application is in process and being considered under state code. Okay. 
Okay, so that's that's as much as as we're gonna gonna get, and I think we probably ought to just move on to uh, a, a, a public hearing at this point, and then give uh, the parties any any final words, just so we can move forward. Unless unless that response from Ms. Lark is enough for you, Ms. Stra Mr. Strasburg, to be comfortable to drop this appeal. Uh, at, at this stage, but again, we can go through uh, and, and hold the, the public hearing again. I'm not trying to short circuit the process by any means. Don't don't mistake my I, I just don't if if, if we're um, I, I also don't want to ha have uh, spend time uh, d dealing with an issue that maybe doesn't exist. But it sounds like there's a lot of mistrust between the parties, so we may have to anyway, and that's okay. So, so, so given that, let's let's at least open it up to, to to a public hearing. And before doing so, let me just let the members of the public know again. It's it's helpful if you speak to. It's it's not helpful for me as an appeals hearing officer. To tell oh, I don't I don't like a billboard I don't want this or wh whatever. If you can speak to the merits of of of, of the case, uh, that helps me. It's, this is not a uh, a, a vote a, a majority vote type of outcome. This is um, application of 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 law. And to the extent those in the public would like to share that, that, that that's what is most helpful to me. You're welcome to share whatever you'd like. I would like to limit the comments to two minutes uh, per person. So uh, if the city could help sort of monitor that timing uh, for those wishing to speak. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and give a, a little bit of instruction on how to um, comment. If you open your participants list, um, there should be in the lower right hand corner, a tiny little hand icon. If you wish to speak, please click that hand icon and I will see. Um, I see Ralph Becker would like to make a comment. Um, Ralph, I'm going to unmute you. You have 2 minutes. Thank you. I'll make this very brief. Uh, thank you, Matt, Mr. Worthland for allowing us to participate. Uh, we submitted a letter uh, that we hope you will consider as you uh, as you decide on this case. And we really said everything in the letter, I think, that we feel is pertinent. Uh, we support the city's position on this, um, have a fairly extensive background on this issue, both in terms of the law and in terms of its background and application over the years. And feel that the city's denial is both well-founded and consistent with city code and with good policy for the city. And I realize you're making a determination based on law, uh, but uh, hope you'll consider our comments that we've submitted in writing. And I think they cover anything I would say orally. Thank you, Mr. Becker. Um, if you could please lower your hand. And Matt, I don't see anybody else with their hand raised. Okay, uh, Mr. Becker, thank you. And uh, recognizing not that um, we're not seeing or hearing any others wishing to speak, I will uh, close the public hearing and bring it back for any final comments, if if any, from uh, Mr. Strasburg and Ms. Lark. What well, city? Why don't you go first? We'll give the appellant the last word. Um, unless the hearing officer has any specific questions, I don't have anything to add. Okay, thank you. At this point, Mr. Strasburg. Yeah, and I would just ape what Ms. Lark said. I think you have a good understanding of what's at issue here. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, well, I will. Uh, uh, um, and and candidly, let, let me just say, I I I I recognize. Some of the frustrations that that the appellant um, and, and their client may 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 feel. I mean, given the how this has proceeded, um, uh, you know, I think it's it's it certainly recognized that 
um, uh, you know, whether, whether it be the, the, the typo of the, of the previous, uh, uh, the previous application in, in the appeal and how all that came about and the, and the city acknowledged that. Um, uh, but when it, when it does come down to this issue, I, 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 I am persuaded. I, I, I just don't have any way of getting around the fact that, uh, that the, the, the appellant by its own admission um, uh, asked for and is seeking uh, this to be decided under state law uh, that I it's simply beyond my authority as an appeals hearing officer as much as I w would love to get into the merits I, I just haven't seen or heard anything that that would Persuade me otherwise than than the plain language of the city code, which is where I uh, receive my authority as, as the appeals hearing officer. So um, I, I am dismissing this appeal simply because I don't have have that authority um, uh, to apply uh, state law. And so, given that, uh, uh, I think that that with respect to this appeal, it would seem that the the, the the appellant has the option to take this to a, a, a district court. And, and again, I apologize for the, I don't, I don't apologize because I wasn't involved, but I, I can understand the frustrations uh, of how this proceeded. But based on what I heard, um, that it sounds like the, the second application specifically uh, applied under state law will be considered as that second application. And so I don't think that um, uh, that dismissing this appeal as I've done will, um, will uh, again, cause any issues at this point. And the second application can be uh, decided um, by the city uh, under state law. And I think hopefully this will send a clear message that because it's under state law that it would probably be a uh, um, not telling you what what to do but i i think you probably wouldn't need to make an appeal to the appeals hearing officer if the outcome of that second application and i'm not trying to give anybody advice so i'll just stop talking but uh just 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 want to make make that clear and uh, thank you for your time so if we could uh, let's move on to the second issue uh and on the 533 what uh, south 400 west on re regarding raising the height of the billboard and this is a pln app 2021-01165 uh case number and and again if the city wants to amy if you just want to give a, a brief context of, of the issue and then we'll Give the appellant, uh, Mr. Strasburg, a chance to uh, get into the, the issues there. Uh, yeah, again, this is an appeal submitted by Reagan Outdoor Advertising. Um, they are represented by Dr Bradley Strasburg. Um, Salt Lake City made an administrative decision to deny a request by Reagan Outdoor Advertising to raise the height of an existing billboard at approximately 533 South 400 West. Um, this appeal is related to an administrative decision for building permit BLD 2021-07175. Thank you, Mr. Strasburg. Uh, thanks, Matt. Um, so, this appeal actually has an issue, um, that sort of, I, I guess would go to the, uh, your, your, your subject matter jurisdiction of this before we even get to the merits. Um, the city made a, uh, made an argument that, you know, the, the appeal authority has no jurisdiction over state law decisions. And um, regardless of the merits of that, in looking at the uh, actual decision that we're talking about, which is the November 1st, 2021 letter, uh, I don't see that as a final decision. Um, the, 
uh, you may know that you may have noted that the letter we just looked at in the previous appeal gives the uh, the acknowledgement that this is a final decision, and here are your appeal rights, and this is what you do. None of that is contained in this letter. Uh, in fact, the, the the final sentence of this letter is almost like a question, you know, a, a remark that we'd be happy to consider a new application requesting a height adjustment to lower the height of the sign. So there's no indication in the letter, um, as there should be, that this is actually a final decision or that we have a right to appeal it. Um, the, you know, the city code 21A6240 defines an administrative decision as a final order. Utah code requires under 109A202 that a city notify the applicant of a final action on a pending application. Now, obviously, we filed this appeal, right? I mean, we filed it because out of an abundance of caution, but in looking at the actual decision, I'm not sure that it is a final decision for which that this that this uh, tribunal can review. Um, and this sort of ties into the city's jurisdictional argument. If there's no appeal notice, how do we know when or where to file our appeal? Um, you know, they're going to keep making this argument that Certain decisions need to be appealed to one place and then other decisions need to be go somewhere else, but we don't have any notice of that. We don't know. We need to know when and where to appeal. And this has been another issue that we've dealt with now for 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 a few months, uh, based on all the uh, denials of, uh, of permit requests. Um, and frankly, based on the lack of final decision, this. We think this should be remanded back to the city to actually issue a final decision and tell us where to appeal and when and the time we have, because they're different under state law and city ordinance, depending so, on, the, you know. And can I, can I interrupt you? Thank you. Just uh, uh, a question. Did the city, uh, and I think I know the answer, but did the city tell you then to provide any kind of guidance or tell Reagan to appeal to this uh, to the appeals hearing officer. Or is this something you just at? Again, I think I heard out of the out of an abundance of caution you appealed on your own. Yeah. Uh, or was there any city guidance given to you? For no, there, 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 to my knowledge, now Sam may have a document I don't have, but to my knowledge, this is the only communication, the November first letter, and they don't tell us what to do. They don't tell us that it's even a final decision. Uh, and frankly, so look, I don't want to. It's difficult to get into the whole. I, I understand what you said last time. The, the the city ordinance tells you you're you're not supposed to uh, make decisions based on state law, right? You're supposed to apply city ordinances, but um, we need some direction here. And frankly, in every decision made by the city, but specifically now in front of you, Matt, this decision, we need direction as to, is it final? Because if it is, the clock starts running. And is and it, it also helps us now determine which court we need to go to, right? If we need to go to district court or if we need to go to an appeals officer. And this has been part of our problem too, right? We never know where to go and when to do it. So we have to do things out of an abundance of caution, like we did here. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it, in this case, it would be very appropriate to get a final decision from the city stating it's a final order and telling us this is a state decision. You have, you know, this much time to go to the district court. And I, that, I mean, look, that's due process. That would be fairness. Having to guess every time is not. That's the opposite of due process. That's just trickery. And that's what we've been dealing with. Um, but in this specific case, I think it's pretty clear. It doesn't say it's a final decision. It doesn't tell us when to appeal and it doesn't tell us where to go to do that appeal. Um, uh, now, just on the issue of, I, I will say this, um, and Matt, I didn't even know you were a, uh, uh, administrative appeals officer. And this is, it's nice to know that you are. Uh, <laughs> The uh, the last time I did this was before um, Craig Call, and frankly, he'd been doing it I think since the city was established. Um, and but he uh, 
he was denying these these arguments on the administrative tribunal doesn't have jurisdiction uh, consistently because he was applying, he was basically saying, well, look, I have to abide by Utah law. The city has to abide by Utah law. And 109A104 prohibits a city or a hearing officer from imposing requirements that conflict with state law. And even the city code still requires hearing officers to reverse if a decision violates state law. So I'm not sh I'm not sure that, you know, I know what this what the city code says, but it's it, it's difficult for for us because now there's not there's also nothing in city code that provides a zoning administrator the authority to make those decisions and and and, and yet an a zoning authority is the one making those decisions and you can't even touch them um which is sort of an odd concept but um it's the confusion of the whole thing that's that's a problem for us because the Utah code, the 109A701 still says as a condition precedent to judicial review, the adverse, you know, adversely affected party has to timely and specifically challenge a land use authority's land use decision. And so we have to make sure that we do that, right? But then we have timing requirements for bringing it to the state court. And we don't know how those sort of work together or opposing each other. Um, and I guess this ties back to our original argument is if a decision is going to be made by the city's zoning administrator and that decision is going to be considered final, it has to tell us that it is final, number one, and number two, where to go to appeal that decision. Um, in all honesty, I, 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 I mean, I can get into the merits. I don't know if you want to hear the merits because of your position that, you know, the statement you made in the last uh, appeal um, about the not, you know, because because this is a state law case for sure. Right. We're at, we asked to raise the sign pursuant to a state uh, statute. 72, 7510.5. And um, I mean, it's pretty clear that we've met all the requirements under that statute. I just don't know whether you want to get into the merits of the argument. Yeah, no, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. I mean, I'm certainly willing, willing to hear that, but I think, uh, again, uh, not, not that it would telegraph wh wh where I'm headed, but it's certainly a concern as I had in the last issue. And so I, I, I think you've brought enough on this initial issue, issue on the jurisdiction that we could hear from the city and and still open it up for a public hearing at least on 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 this particular issue and kind of see where we go from the, from there and then i can make make a decision and if at that point i want to hear more on the merits uh i'll i'll certainly uh let let you know um but if i could ask miss slark to address the issues raised by mr strasberg on the jurisdictional issue that would be help helpful and and you know again his arguments about the not being a final decision and um guidance on where and how to do an appeal so anyway that would be helpful um so i think the position with respect to whether the hearing officer has jurisdiction is fairly clear it's set out in um city code and it appears the hearing officer is very familiar with that um I would disagree with Mr. Strasberg's um, summary of how Mr. Paul had um, treated uh, these arguments in the past. Um, and I think that uh, city code has been um, clarified since those decisions to make it even clearer to try and clear up this um, confusion. Um, and with respect to the direction of Utah code, with respect to how appeal appeals are um to be brought and the requirement of providing an appeal procedure um i would just uh, direct the hearing officer and perhaps mr strasberg to utah code 109a in the 700 series where it clearly states um that a municipality is to identify um 
which type of cases are heard by its hearing officers and which ones are to go directly to district court. So contrary to um, sort of any statements that it is uh, contrary to Utah code um, to identify that state law provisions go to the district court is actually specifically provided for um, in the 700 series. I don't remember if it's 701, 702 or 703 at this point. Um, with respect to whether the um, city's letter on November 1st uh, is a final decision, unfortunately, um, none of that was briefed um, prior to um, coming here today. So I can't tell you ex if that was the only thing that was sent out that day or if other information was sent out or if other emails have been sent out. Um, and so I'm sort of caught a little flat footed because I honestly don't know. Um, um, you know, the purpose of an appeal and filing briefs ahead of time is so that I can understand what the arguments are and what the concerns are um, and so that we can collect the appropriate information and address them. And I'm just not in a position to be able to tell you if anything other than that letter has gone out with respect to this. I can certainly tell you that I have not received, I personally have not received um, any communications from Reagan's counsel asking me um, if it was a final decision or asking for clarification if it's a final decision or asking for um, any kind of position on where an appeal would need to be filed. In fact, there's been zero communication other than receiving the appeal. Um, so with respect to that, I just unfortunately um, can't address at this point um, the question with regard to other materials going out. If you had asked me before I heard Mr. Strasberg argument, I would say, yeah, it's a final decision. We made a decision with respect to the request that was submitted. But frankly, I need more information to be able to respond. OK, <clears throat> OK, thank you very much. Um, again, just just to be uh, complete, I, I think we should still open it up for a public hearing. Um, uh, again, at this point, uh, I'm, uh, you know, if, if there's anyone that has anything to add on the jurisdictional issue, that, that that's helpful. But we'll we'll hear anything you want to say in the two minute time frame. Uh, Aubrey, do we have anybody here that would like to speak? And I'll open up the public hearing for them. There is. Um one hand up and it is Ref Ralph Becker once again. Um, Ralph, you are unmuted and you have two minutes. Uh, thank you. And thank you, Mr. Worthland, uh, for hearing this additional case. I don't think I stated before, but I am uh, the chair of the board and we, the letter that was sent to you is from Scenic Utah. Um, it was sent from myself and the executive director, um, Kate Kapischke. Um, we, as in the other case, I realize you're, you're on some other kinds of issues here and not so much the substance of the case, but we, we really just commented on the substance of this appeal and, uh, like the other, um, uh, case before you, we strongly support the city's, uh, position on this and, um, and I, I've got to say, really have a difficult time even understanding how the the uh, uh, the appellant has been damaged. This is a a billboard that's been there for a long time. There's been advertising on it. Um, obviously, if those purchasing advertising didn't believe there was any value in that billboard because their views were obstructed, they wouldn't be using the billboard. Um, so, in addition to the, I think the things that we saw from uh, from the city's uh, rationale, um, it's it seems like an odd case to bring after a billboard that's been, you know, and a, a sign uh, that's been in place for so many years. Um, I, um, I this is a, I think a billboard as well that we see as having many adverse impacts not just on the city and its residents, but on businesses and in their ability to develop their property. Uh, I just want to note that. That's time. Uh, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Aubrey, anyone else uh, wishing to speak? Yes. Um, Kate Kos Kopiski, I am unmuting you. Yeah, thank you. It's it's Kopiski, and um, thanks very much. And I'm the uh, director of Scenic Utah, as Ralph just mentioned. And I think I would just add that um, Mr. Strasberg is using words like confusion, the city's playing games, trickery, fairness. And I guess I would just say that those are exactly the tactics that industry has been using to, you know, land us where we are in these kinds of situations and that um, overriding local governments is, is, is a strategy and um, outdoor advertising uh, billboard owners are the only type of business that can move their property for any reason they want or raise the height for any reason they want. And if a city denies it, they say, then you have to buy us out. And if the city can't buy us out, then we get to go wherever we want. And it's just a real frustration among businesses and local leaders. And I think, you know, the tactics that you're accusing the city of are the ones that that industry uses. Um, and that, that's a frustration. So that just want to weigh in with that. Thank you, Ms. Kapischke. Aubrey, it looks like your um, bandwidth may have gone down. I, any, anybody have a sense of whether there's anyone else um, wishing to speak? Amy, I don't know if you can see any. Um, I don't see any other hands raised. Um, if okay. anyone else wishes to speak, if you can raise that hand in the lower uh, right hand corner of your screen. And we can un unmute you. Maybe we'll give it just a second. Okay. And I don't see any more hands at this time. Okay. So seeing uh, no other, uh, no others wishing to speak, I'll close the public hearing and 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 bring it back uh, uh, again for any if there's any. Uh, Final word from the city that hasn't already been said, Ms. Lark. I don't think I have anything unless you have specific questions for me. Okay, and then and Mr. Strasburg, anything final from you or in response to the city's arguments? I uh, yeah, Matt, thanks. The so um obviously, you know, the the issue of this subject matter jurisdiction can be raised at any time by any party, and that's why we raised it now. Um, because uh after review of the documents. Right, it, there's there's no dispute that the only letter you have does not say it's a final decision and does not provide like the notice of appeal that the other letter provided. Frankly, it, it, it seems clear that if the city had such a letter, they would have provided it as part of the record on appeal because they did in the last appeal. There is no such letter here. Um, and so if we are going to deal strictly with state statutes and uh, direct appeals of decisions based on state statutes, we need a final decision to do that. Um, we need a final decision. We need something that says this is our final decision or a final action, just like I said in the last one. And uh, and informing us of uh, you know when and where to appeal that. Uh, th there is no document before you that uh, says that um, and and we need that to go forward to a district court. Um, just just so I have it on the record. If that's okay. Um, yes, please. The, the 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 bases for which we were going to uh, dispute the the actual merits were, were, were very plain that the city gave four reasons for its denial. The first of which has apparently been abandoned on appeal and was arbitrary and capricious anyway. Um, and the second of which that the statute itself was enacted to deal with obstructions relating to I-15 was not actually part of the statute that we're talking about and it's not the terms of that statute and under the terms of the statute, uh, we clearly uh, are entitled to relief. Um, the, the city came up with a new argument uh, on the merits in its briefing about that this was not a directional sign. 
um, that wasn't part of the reason for the basis for denying our application. But um, so we don't think that would have been considered or consider could be considered on appeal. But also it's just flatly wrong as the directional sign is by definition uh, that what we're dealing with is a directional sign uh, based on the definition that it's containing information about public places owned or operated by, for instance, the state. And that's what this sign was doing. And the last thing I was gonna say is that the, the final basis for denying our application that it wasn't obstructed long enough uh, isn't a proper denial of the appeal. Um, and it's contrary to the statute, which basically says, if it's blocked, which our picture that we submitted clearly shows it's entirely blocked, we get to move it. Um, and so we don't, we believe that none of the bases that provided were uh, legitimate and, and each of them were either uh, illegal or arbitrary and capricious. Thank you. Th thank you very much, Brad. I appreciate, appreciate your time. Um, so, uh, again, as, as much as I would prefer to make a decision on, on the merits, um, uh, I, again, I, I just haven't been able to see any way around a very clear statute um, that limits my authority, which is different than a zoning administrator. I mean, a zoning administrator is not specifically prohibited from applying state law or hearing this this issue, at least uh, uh, as, as best as I can understand the statute specifically calls out and again limits my authority which again is only my authority is based on that that city code so i i don't see a way around that now with respect to the argument that there was no uh final decision i, I mean the outcome i, I i'm trying to i'll save you everyone the 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 issue of remanding it and and then just being adding a, a sentence and being told you can go appeal to the district court um, by um, my decision to um, uh, essentially dismiss the appeal uh, uh, because of lack of jurisdiction it, it gets you to the same place that that I think you can that that's still I, I assume that's still an option. Not not trying to give any any legal advice here, but I, I d I'm not persuaded that that they actually have to say it's a final decision because I think the very act of appealing it is an acknowledgement that it's a final decision from the city, and so and so that is my decision tonight on this matter as well to dismiss it for lack of jurisdiction for an appeals hearing officer to hear a matter uh, that is. Uh, only uh, a matter of applying state law. So with that, that completes uh, the, the matters before us tonight. Again, I appreciate everyone's participation, both the appellant and representative, city representative, city staff, and, and members of the public who have participated tonight. And that concludes uh, our, our hearing tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you.